Welcome to Homerati. We have Adam back with us today. Tried to kill me, but I'm still here. <laughs> Boo. Are you kidding? Be yes. nice. <laughs> yes, I've returned. I do have to ask what you told people while I was gone. Uh, we said that you got a pacemaker pudding. I okay. said that you were getting the chop. <laughs> Why does everyone keep writing this on my wall? Because it's funny. Is it? Yes. I'm like, okay, survived my surgery. <laughs> oh, finally transitioning. Good for you, Adam. See, it's been a few years in the making. Lovely reaction to me almost dying. So you're feeling better though? Your arm? Yeah, I'm fine. He Next. Went, he went to Next. Winter Pride. He's fine. <laughs> yes. That's true. He was at Winter Pride the following weekend, yeah. so he's fine. What have you guys been up to? Uh, we had our first, I had my first we. Like I talk like I have more than the one The royal we <laughs> of Tommy. Uh, I had my first show in Victoria. We brought Jujube in for a family day in Vancouver and then we took her to Victoria the next day and it was pretty incredible. The, um, they're so hungry for some like shows and stuff there and I'm just hungry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was, it was a really good time. It was, I was, cause we do something in Vancouver. We do runway, right? At, at every Thursday at Liberace. So we did it in Victoria. And with Jujube. With Jujube. She, tell me she won. Of course, no, she didn't win. She's, she's, don't worry, she is not winning. Oh. Um, <laughs> okay. But uh, so we, I didn't know how it was going to work, but they did great. There was even one drag, like I have a wound. Can you see that? Yeah. Can you get in on oh, that? Oh, it's a bruise and a scratch. Yeah. This was uh, some Hot drag queen did a uh, oh. cartwheel. And I was like, yeah, go, go. And then I just felt something hit my arm. I was like, ow. <laughs> yeah, it was like pretty brutal. Like her stiletto slash you? Her like stiletto. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> but yeah, it was a great time. So shout out to Victoria. See you in May. Cool. Well, nothing interesting in my life. I've actually at all. No, Shock nothing at all. I've actually been finally watching some of the shows that you guys have been pestering me about all year. So uh, The Good Wife. I'm caught up in those are long seasons. Mm -hmm. So I'm caught up on that. And I've been watching Downton Abbey a bit. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Selfridge is one that I got Adam to watch. And that one's good as well. So I've been hibernating pretty much until I go to Brittany. It shows. And eating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry too. God, yeah. I'm happy you're back. <laughs> All right, well, let's move on to some gossip. Now, the first thing that we're going to talk about is one of the singing shows has been canceled in the US, and that uh -huh. is The X Factor, because... It sucks. Simon Cowell is leaving and going back to Britain. No, I think, I think the no, that's reason... Not, like, that's not it. No, no, no. The reason that he's leaving is because they canceled it. I thought they said they canceled because he's leaving. No, no, he wouldn't I leave. thought he wouldn't commute to LA, so they canceled. Yeah, that's what I read as no, well. No, I'm sure what happened, they're probably spinning the story the yeah. whole anyway, but he probably sat down and they're like, so your show sucks, we're gonna cancel it. And he's like, okay, so I'll take, I'll go back to the UK. The Because the one. UK is also not doing as well without him. Their stars do better though over there, right? Like once oh, they yeah. finish, they kill Yeah, charts but over there, there, not here. Yeah, do, no, do no, no. You, do you think the singing shows are just getting tired now? Um, no, because The Voice is still killing it, and American Idol is still dragging us along. I heard it's pretty good this season. I'm not watching it, but people I know have been liking it. I think the thing with singing shows is, I, I know for me, is I'm so invested during the audition process, and then when they, once they get to... Hollywood like, Week or whatever. Or, or like further down, I'm like, okay, I don't really care about this. I just, I, you like the surprise of someone really hideous sounding so good, or you yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. you kind of like that. Right. We'll move on to something else now, and that is Shia LaBeouf or oh, LaBeouf. Yeah. Shia, Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. How do you what? not? It's French. LaBeouf. LaBeouf. Whatever. Whatever. He's not even famous anymore. He. Oh God. <laughs> so I didn't even know that was him. I'm sure we'll show up paper bag picture of him here. Yeah. I saw the picture of this person doing it. I thought it was some sort of like joke. Yeah. Do you, do you hear about this art exhibition that he's doing? Well, that's what this is, right? This whole I'm not famous thing. And you're no, supposed well, to put he it started with head. that. No, I am. He had that going. But then now he, there's this thing that's called I am hashtag I'm sorry. And he's literally standing in this thing with the bag over his head. And um, people read these comments that are, I think are pe things that people have said about him on Twitter. And they just read it. And he just stands there. And he's doing it for seven days, like eight hours a day, just standing there behind this thing. Yeah, here's the thing. Shy is getting in trouble a lot recently because he's been copying a whole bunch Plagiar of shit. Like one of his movies was plagiarized, then his sorry apology was actually taken from Yahoo 2010, like oh. answer in question. This is apparently being plagiarized by some female artist who's already done this entire thing, sitting across the table and you're supposed to just like, it's a whatever, yeah. a oh, piece. Oh, Maria Abramovich, yeah. Some crazy and ass that, name. when she did it, cause she's like a performance art, like she is the real deal. And so he's just ripping something else again. I kind of feel like what he's doing is a rip off of the Jimmy Kimmel celebrities reading mean tweets. Oh, <laughs> okay, so this isn't funny. No. That's all we have for gossip. When we come back, we're gonna move on to music. Welcome back, we're moving on to music now and we're gonna talk about a new music video from American Idol alum, Kimberly Caldwell. It's called On The Weekend. Take a look.
So you might have recognized. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that nerd? Oh, oh, that he looked terrible. Him. Until he had a makeover that was so cute. <laughs> well. Well, yeah, so in December, I went to LA with Kimberly and her crew, and we filmed. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. You dropped that name. Oh. <laughs> I said Thanks. that Sorry, sorry. Too. You dropped his purse. Oh my God, this is so crazy. <laughs> you guys are the worst. But anyway, we went to LA and we filmed the video and it was a lot of fun. Um, I like. I think the song is really fun. It's kind of like 80s inspired. No, I like it. Yeah. It's a good song. After I listened to it, I was like humming it and I was like, oh, it's already in my head. Yeah. We like rewatched it just now and it's still in. I'm like, yep. we're getting ready for this. I'm like, oh, no, f I gotta get ready. <laughs> no, I think I said this to her once. We're friends with her. Like we see her. She lives in Vancouver. She's like, oh, she I haven't said her name once. So calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's been dropped except you from this label. Uh, no, label. we have a great time with her, and she's. She, I always talk to her about this. I think she sounds a little bit like Robin, and I don't know if she loves a comparison, but I think she's got that same scratchy, Kinda. not like Rasty, tuned voice. Like it's because we've seen her sing live at some Ooh. of your events. At one of your great. events at Tommy D's. Tommy like, D's event. TFD presents. You're and welcome. She yeah. just yeah. sounds like that. So I like that it's someone you can hear live, and it's yeah. going to be the same experience you're going to get on the yeah. video. Yeah, she's a cool chick. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. looking forward to seeing what she comes out with uh, later this year. The next person that we're going to talk about is Manila. <gasps> My babesies! As well, <laughs> they have a new video called Helen Keller. Take a look. Let the bygone be bygone. Queen Saigon, McQueen Nylon, Facebook Nylon. Don't try me, honey. I'll go to jail. I got the bill money. I don't see her, Helen Keller. I don't see her, Helen Keller. I don't see her, I don't see her. I don't see her, Helen Keller. I don't see her, Helen Keller. I don't see her, Helen Keller. I don't see her. I don't see her. I don't see her. Helen Keller. So, <laughs> this one's touchy. Is it? Well, not really, but I think, I I know when she told me she was doing it, I was like, ooh, a song called Helen Keller. Yeah, ooh. that's what I thought when you told me about yeah. it. Yeah, and then a lot of people were kind of wondering that, but the song is actually really, 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 really good. They this is a song. I yeah. feel like a lot of them are parodies and jokes. No, this I is like, like a this song. This is a song. This yeah. is an yeah. original, and it's like, for her it's really different because she's really campy, but this one she's a little bit like sexier, yeah. And, yeah. and she raps, and I think her raps are hilarious. I think Caswell looks amazing. I think his raps are great. Yeah. He usually doesn't. Well, a lot of his stuff is very campy, very cheesy, playing off something like what was sexual. It, the Twitter selfie thing. Yeah, and also, and also, I was, I, I know when I watched, it, I was like, oh my god, Manila, I'm, I'm, I'm attracted to him for the first time, and, and she was like, <laughs> it's because he usually surrounds himself with really attractive men. Oh, uh, so he's like a two to a ten. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's a ten to uh, a ten. So. He doesn't kill me. No, um, I'll sleep with him. Yeah. I'll make up for it. No, it's, it's a good song. I mean, it features a legendary drag queen named Roxy, who this is a really good story, who doesn't have a cell phone. Facebook, wow. like any kind of social media, so they like had to hound her down to find her. She was like super famous in the 80s. Mail like, her invitations. Yeah, to like face. snail mail. Like they had to find out Dear where she was. drag queen. <laughs> yeah. She's got another one coming out that we shot when she was here, and that one's even more like it's gonna be great. I can't wait to We shot? It. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Oh. I, I organized that shoot. Oh, hold on. <laughs> get this one together for you. Put it away. Next. Okay, well, that's all we have for music. Uh, we're gonna move on to movies, and the first one we're gonna talk about is a thriller called Nonstop. Take a look. Someone on this flight is threatening to kill someone every 20 minutes unless $150 million is transferred to this account number. So this looks really good. Yes. Liam Neeson. He, I mean, he plays the dark character. He, We've thing. got to figure I, it out. I was, <laughs> Get off my I plane. Was, yeah. I was watching the trailer and I was like, oh, so he's playing the same character. I feel like all of his characters should just be the same person. They really <laughs> are. And they should be in different, in different scenarios. Um, this movie looks like terrifying. Ter like not scary, but well, like yeah, it's a thriller. Ooh. But then it's also forty thousand feet in the sky. So like, and I that, hate anything that happens I, in I a know, plane. Me too. Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 <laughs> turbulence. Like, yeah, I just start praying. I'm yeah. like, oh god, I'm going down. I feel like when the gun's in midair and he grabs it, it gets a little cheesy. But the rest of the stuff I appreciate, and I like Julianne Moore is in this. And Julianne Moore. Julianne Moore. <laughs> yeah, I and know Lady her name. Mary from um, Downton Abbey. Yeah, oh, Duffy. that's who it is. Lady Michelle Duffy. Yeah. Okay, she plays the flight attendant, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. At least she's got a job. Other than Downton Abbey. <laughs> I mean, like, she's breaking into the... Oh, the okay, American I'm like, she's Sorry. doing fine. <laughs> Calm down. No, I definitely know. I, I, me in theaters, I don't know if I do thrillers very well in theaters, but I'll you see don't do any, this one. Let's get this straight. You never go to the theaters. I, what did we see? We saw something. 
Hunger, uh, Games. The Hunger Games. Okay, I'll see that in theater. That's yeah. the only thing I think. I've, Big I've, experiences. I'm not spending eighteen dollars or whatever. Seems and, that, and that's not going to be three D. And it's seriously. you don't need that giant. Yeah, Avatar was it. the other one. So yeah, exactly. I get okay, it. Fair I enough. get it. Okay, well, if you do want to see a movie in three D, Pompeii is going to be on in three D. So let's take a look at the trailer. From all corners of the Roman world, people would gather here. What is this? It is the mountain. For all our strength. Can you feel that? We lived in the shadow of a greater power. I'd rather Tell not me. see this movie <laughs> in any D. I could see your face <laughs> as we were. <laughs> One D wouldn't even not do it. Not half. <laughs> no, it does not look good. So, what is with. Okay, first of all, what the f is this movie about? Pompeii, like, Mount Vesuvius exploding and everyone in Pompeii dying. But like, okay, so like that's the story. There's your whole movie. So yes. I'm just like, I don't understand. First all of all, okay, he looks really hot in it. Kit Harrington looks super yes, hot yeah. in it. But I just, I'm like, so we got Hercules and now we have this, this month, which is like kind of it's the same. It's the air everyone's in the Roman and Greek stuff. it's so bad. Like it's not oh, done really well at all. Like, I mean, I just, I don't like, this movie looks really stupid. Okay, but to answer your question, this is like Titanic. Like, you know how it ends. You're just hearing the story of the people who are involved. Sure. This one isn't real. I don't think Titanic was either, but. Well, but that's the thing. It's like, Pompeii, wasn't that like a myth? No. Read oh. <laughs> 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 a history book. No, these people are like, Frozen in like ash and stuff. You can go there, you could at least, and see like the people who couldn't get out in time and are still oh. like, statues of like dead bodies and stuff. It's this famous area and they didn't have time and that's the point. They all die for the most part, not everyone, but no one knew what was going to happen. I, I hope somebody says I'll never let go. <laughs> Don't let go of Jack. Yeah, I'm Shia LaBeouf wrote the oh. script and <laughs> lended from something else. Yeah. No, I have no intention of seeing this. I have no intention of seeing this. It's getting a million hits on YouTube, though. Because it's only because he's so people. attractive. Yeah. And she's pretty if you're... I don't even know who it is. Do we know who it is? She's, isn't she Roxy from, like, Punch Love, Drunk Love? Oh, em Drunk Love. oh Emily Browning. Yeah. 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 I think it's her. Whatever. Some blonde girl. Sucker what? Punch. She was from Sucker Punch. Sure. Yeah. Next. <laughs> okay, well, that's all we have for movies. When we come back, we're going to move on to some TV. Welcome back. We're moving on to TV now, and we're going to do something a little different. We're going to talk about uh, Amazon has a series of pilots that they have released for their second year in a row. And uh, Adam, we're going to talk a little bit about it. Yeah, so Amazon, like Amazon.com, where you buy books or porn from, or I don't know what people do with it. <laughs> Action figures. Uh, of course you do. <laughs> so porn for you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, they've done this, this is their second year. They create pilots, and then people get to watch it for free and then vote on which one they want to turn into a real show. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the first one is called The After. Take a look. I need to get work to my husband and daughter in New York. Forget it, lady. Power's out. The city's in gridlock. We haven't had communication since yesterday. Yesterday? What do you mean? It's like Lost meets Millennium meets X Files because well, like, so it's what, Chris Carpenter. So like, what happens though in that? Like, that was the one okay. where they were all running. Yeah. So you've seen the trailer, but we've <laughs> actually we just seen, saw. We yes. just saw. Yeah, but we saw the first episode. So. Oh. Yeah, we watched it. Yeah. I knew you would like it. It's basically like the morning after some sort of apocalypse happens, yeah. and this group of people are somehow oh. connected by this weird. We all have the same birthday. What's going on? And yeah. there's aliens or monsters or who knows what, oh. but. But should I spoil it? Yes. Well, at the end, all of a sudden, there's like this alien, and then it runs off, and I don't really know where it's gonna go. But I, I feel like I got me hooked enough that I'll probably at least watch really? the next couple. The episodes, characters are funny if it, if it happens. Yeah, the main character is this actually very French-sounding woman. Like, there's not many American shows that have a main character who's got a huge accent. So yeah. I thought that was interesting. Pass. Fine. <laughs> Tell them about the next. I hate <laughs> aliens. They're so silly. The next one is called Transparent. Listen, I have I'm, I need to talk to you about something. There's a big change going on. And... Oh, God. I love your kids. 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 It is cancer. Daddy, oh, my are you God. Dying? Just you were right. If you're dying. I knew it was cancer. Daddy, are you dying? I don't think cancer. he has cancer. Dad, just, just tell us how you're dying. He looks good. Thank you. Well, it doesn't matter how he looks. Uh, Remember Jill Goldberg? She yeah. had a melanoma for three years. They didn't. They couldn't see it. Then boom, she's dead. Bill Goldberg is dead. Yeah. yeah. No. And if Daddy, I think you have the kind of way you look good. Like the one, well, all your friends died of it. What is the thing? Prostate, right. prostate cancer. Right. That's right. the one that you yeah. probably yeah. have. Right. Super sick. Oh my god. Never. Nothing to be joked about. Then that's beside. How many of your friends? 
So for this, it's featuring Jeffrey Tambor from most famously like Arrested Development. Mm -hmm. Not a handsome man by any real means. He plays a trans person. He's like okay, so it's going a, it's, through. Yeah, it's a pun. It's a, a play on words. It's transparent because it's uh, about a, a Jewish very family. Very Jewish family. Very, uh, yeah. Into it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And he's by the end of it, he slowly reveals to them that he wants to come out, that he feels he's a woman inside. They all in the first episode, they're all going to I dinner just got and goosebumps. they're all going to dinner and they all they're a very outspoken family. They're all like talking over each other and yelling at each other and they have no filter. And they're all at the table and they all literally think that their dad is going to tell them that he has cancer. And they're like, you you have cancer, da da. da. And he's like, shut up. And then he doesn't end up telling them at he that dinner. And then towards it's, the end of the episode, well, you watch it, yeah. it slips. But he has a support group, and it's like how his day to day is, and yeah. someone just like accepts. But there's a lot of buzz for this, and they're yes. actually saying like this is uh, Amazon's. I close my mouth. <laughs> but this is uh, this is Amazon's like House of Cards, like yeah. how Netflix got the House. Uh, like of literally, I've got goosebumps. <laughs> I'm into it. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, uh, the next one, which is the third one that we had narrowed it down to out of the five, and it's called The Rebels. This is the trailer. What is wrong with you, lady? What's wrong with me? You you just, you slammed on your brakes out of nowhere. What were you thinking? What am I thinking? You destroyed my fender. Look at this. This is a school zone. You know that, right? Are you even, are you a parent here? Why would you ask me that? I don't know. Well, wait, why would you ask me if I'm a parent? Because I'm not driving a Range Rover like all the okay. other yoga all mills right. oh. in your oh. Pilates class? What did your nanny call in sick today? Oh, that's nice. You, you want to do this? I'll do this. I'll do this all day long. Are you insane, lady? This is imported from Italy. Good. Make a bad situation worse. So this one is about a woman who inherits a football team because her husband passed Dies. away. Yeah. yeah, so she's just the wife of a football team owner. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want to sell it. It's the whole, like, woman doing a man's job and how ridiculous is this kind of scenario. Yeah. But Pass. it's funny. It's funny, and football's a big thing right now. Show. Yeah, no, that one for sure. They're this not one... mutually exclusive. You can watch <laughs> yeah. both of them, Tommy. This one is okay. Like, yes. I, I didn't hate it, but I, I don't see it being picked up. No. Probably not. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, one show that we all watched. And well, like, let's get down to business. Yeah, here. let's get down to business. Down one to business. show that we were very, very into this season, as you've seen us talking about it, uh, is The Coven, American Horror Story season three. Let's take a look at how it ended. You took my power the minute I gave birth to you. A woman becomes a mother. She can't help but see her mortality in that show. Little face. Every time I looked at you, I saw my own death. You were a constant reminder of my worst fears. So we actually, this ended last time we mm -hmm. filmed, but Adam wasn't here and he really likes to talk about it. So, so we, we wanted it so we waited it. We waited it. We waited for you to talk about it. So you were right. It was Cordelia. Well, that's what I was hoping for. I was hoping, I really wanted it to be her as well. I just didn't think it was going to because of the whole she couldn't have kids exactly. thing. Exactly, and that's why I didn't think it didn't work. But then I was like, well, maybe she couldn't have kids with that guy because he was a witch hunter and they were like forever like enemies the or whatever. The doctor told her she couldn't have kids. Yeah, because she was trying to have kids with a witch hunter. No. Oh okay, my what, God, that's I'm not just, it. I'm, whatever, it's just my reasoning. <laughs> Fine. My two cents on it is I think, and this was at the big, the last episode really turned this whole season to show it was all this woman power thing. Yeah. Like, that's how they really ended Isn't it. the like, whole series about women It power? is, but But this like, was like mothers and daughters, yes. like it was. And then as the women like got together, and even if they don't have powers, and if they just feel like they're a witch, and they can talk, and all this kind yeah. of stuff. And I feel like maybe this is the thing that they would comment on. She couldn't have kids that doesn't make her broken. Like that whole thing where we right. thought it could be, what's her name, Fran, Nan, oh, and yeah. like, well that doesn't really make you a yeah. broken person. You yeah. argued that, but I feel like maybe that's his statement with a woman who can't have kids is still a full person. You know what's so funny is I think, I was reading online a lot about this, the, about the season finale, and they were even touching on things like how, I thought the season was great until I started reading about things and I was like, oh, it actually was kind of a mess. Like, what happened to Zoe's, like, yeah. succubus powers? Or how come they all have the same powers now? I mean, they kind of explained that. Yeah. Cordelia said when they were in times of crisis, their powers, like, expand. So whatever, that was fine. But it was just, they kind of left a lot of things just by the way, felt a little bit rushed towards the end. Like yeah. I was not expecting the finale to come so soon. All of a sudden, it's like the finale's coming up. I really like, liked what? the finale. The f it reminded me a lot. It gave me the same feeling as the Breaking Bad finale, where you got the answer. Like we wanted to know yeah, who we, the we next we Supreme was, was yeah. and we found out. Your and little yeah. Facebook status the night before was like, I know it. Ryan Murphy and that little. Dude, well, because gonna, I was yeah, like, yeah, wouldn't yeah. it be, wouldn't it be annoying Classic, if he was like, yeah. oh, we didn't find out yet. That would have pissed me off. But it was, it ended so well. I love. Sarah Paulson so much yeah. and he's totally 
he's totally creating her to be his next muse after Jessica Lange leaves next season, well, right? I didn't watch season two, but wasn't you know, she the person that? At the she end, was the she's big, big ending. Yeah, yeah, she comes out as kind of the bitch of the season yeah. by the end of it. So but no, I agree with her. And everything you read is like he has got a hard on for her. So he really well, it's does because love it's, her. Jessica Lange was his muse for the first few seasons, yeah. and now that she's leaving. I mean, and I love Sarah Paulson. I mean, she's a big lezzy, so we love that. Did you not know, know that? that? I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, she's a lesbian. Good for her. Yeah. Well, that's all we have for TV. We're going to move on to gay news. And actually, we're going to talk about something that's on TV, and that's the Sochi Olympics, the 2014 Winter Olympics. It's creating a little bit of controversy amongst the gay community just because a lot of us are wondering, should we watch? Should we boycott? And so let's discuss. So um, when all of this stuff came out about Russia's anti-gay laws and stuff, um, obviously everyone is like, sickened by it. I myself am as well. And then everyone's like, let's boycott the Olympics. Let's not watch the Olympics. And I really tried. But then as soon as they started, something just took over me. There is nothing more incredible to me than watching an elite athlete who has trained for their entire life, like, succeed. I cry every single time somebody wins. Oh, yeah. It's just so... You look like you're going to cry. I'm about to cry. I'm about to cry. You don't even, like, I just, there's something about the Olympics that really gets to me. I mean, it, they're just so, these people are, are, are just so incredible. So then it's like, do we boycott? Well, why should you boycott? Are you, if you don't watch the Olympics, who are you hurting? You're not hurting Russia. They're already there. So I'm the, I'm the same way. Like I was a huge supporter. I mean, for 2010, I was in the opening ceremonies. I did, like I, I watched it all the time. You were yeah. I mean, I was so into it, and I look forward to the Olympics all the time. But then, weirdly enough, like the day of, I just decided I wasn't gonna watch it, and I was expect. I was arguing with Adam before mm -hmm. that I was gonna watch it. I'm like, who cares? I I mean, I love watching the athletes, but like, I think I had just watched too many things, too many documentaries, or you know, things that are happening there that I just couldn't do it. I'm just like, I can't. I can't. And I know all that is happening over there and it's so terrible, but honestly, like, if me not clicking on or going onto my CBC app, it's is, not gonna the, affect and, it. But then the same thing, I felt the same way that like, me watching is not gonna affect these athletes who've been training for years. Me not watching is not gonna affect their performance. I believe in Canada, Canada will do well, but I just can't watch, I just can't. Fair enough. Okay, here's Oh, here we go, now. lay it down, lay it down, mommy. First of all, the Olympics are won by 8% of the countries that are involved in them, 80% of the medals. These go to Russia, China, and America because those countries can pay these athletes. Actually, Canada's actually kicking ass, so is the Netherlands and Germany. Yes, the top huge countries that yeah. I go, ask me how much like, South Africa is getting a real sure. wander. Got this, Especially like, in the Winter Olympics. $20 or have no access to snow or can't afford. These are going to countries that have jillions of dollars to back up these athletes who do nothing but practice all day long. And that's great. That's good for them. But these aren't World Olympics. These are won by this small community of the world where most of the population isn't. You think India is winning 80% of these when they not have the most world. of the okay. population? Okay. So again, that's my part about the Olympics. It's okay. not such a big deal for someone winning it because okay. it just goes to the person who has the most money behind oh, them. But they're just so happy when they Sure win. they are. Second, and your argument that you're not watching isn't going to do something, in reality, grand scheme, fine. But that's like the person who says, I don't vote because one vote's not going to do anything. One less person watching a TV show barely affects the ratings. Every gay person not watching a TV show might actually make a difference in the ratings. Every gay person voting for someone or not voting for someone might make a difference. So me not supporting the TV shows which are hosting this, mm -hmm. which are giving money back to this community, to Russia, if it makes a big impact in saying you can't do something awful in your country and still get all our money. But it's like, honestly, it's, it's, you just, uh, like, uh, the gays made such a big uproar and it's just like, you know what, cancel your visas. Nobody wants to f***ing cancel their plastic. If every gay person in the world canceled their visa, visa would be like, Broop! Hey, IOC, we need to sort this out because we just lost however many millions of people. I don't understand how you're with the visa thing, but not the watching the television thing. Do the same thing with watching television. No. Yes. No. <laughs> I will not. That said, we're not doing Coke right now, and we're not doing Coke. We're not drinking Coca-Cola. <laughs> okay. okay, let's move on from the Olympics, and we're going to move on to White Party. The Gay Olympics. The Gay, gay Olympics. Gay, yeah. uh, well, as everyone knows, Patrick and I went last year to White Party in Palm Springs. And the year, oh, I went the year before. Yeah, I'm not that big of a slut. So, had an amazing time. Uh, Patrick can't go this year because our friends are getting married. I'm able to go on this weekend. I'm really looking forward to it. We have actually started setting up some official kickoff events throughout Canada. They're really trying to boost their presence in Canada. It's obviously an American party and they get a lot of attention down there. So we at Homerazzi have been talking with some clubs uh, and they're throwing, all of them are actually throwing on Saturday, March 1st at their individual clubs, uh, kickoff events where they're getting two like two sets of two tickets mm -hmm. to the Saturday, the actual white party itself, because that's a party within white party. Mm -hmm. And then the Sunday tea dance, which we love. Which is the best party oh, of so the weekend. Fun. Oh my God. In and 
Yeah. Big performers at all of them. It's the 25th anniversary, so expect to see some big names big there. Big names. They're still coming out with that. I will be performing. <laughs> Tommy will not. Big <laughs> names, I said. Big names. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's that little <laughs> name you dropped right there. So it's starting uh, East Coast. We're going at Fly Nightclub yeah. in Toronto. We're doing it in Saskatoon at Divas. We are doing it in Winnipeg at Fame. And we're doing it in Vancouver through Tommy D at, at Oasis. Monroe. Monroe at Oasis Ultra Lounge. Yeah. And again, Saturday the 1st, March 1st. It's going to be My awesome. birthday. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Don't get him anything. Just gonna go to the club. We're going to take a video of him on his birthday and show it. So when is when is Y Party? That's in April. April 25th through the 28th. And both of you are going to be gone, so I will be hosting Home Rotsy by myself. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens then. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Don't worry. But that's all we have for today's episode, so we hope to see you guys next time, and thank you for tuning in. Bye! <laughs> you missed that last filming thing. while you're gone, by the way. <laughs> yes, we are. We're doing that episode. First of all, when do we film on, like, the Saturday of a random weekend? I'm going for three days. Calm down. I'm going Friday to the panel. Holy shit. It's fine. We'll